Thank you. Uh, will the code please call the roll? There are eight present. And Alderperson Mary Donahue and Alderperson Rosemary Trester are excused. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting on August 20th. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The minutes are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, and we'll go on to public forum. City Clerk. There is no one this evening. Thank you. Uh, next is Mayor's announcements. I'd like to uh, call up two individuals uh, from our uh, HR department, uh, Sandy Halverson and Jenny Lawrence. Please come forward. Tonight we have a proclamation celebrating National Payroll Week. Whereas the American Payroll Association and its more than 20,000 members have launched a nationwide public awareness campaign that pays tribute to the nearly 150 million people who work in the United States in the payroll profession and who support the American system of paying wages, reporting worker earnings, and withholding federal employment taxes. And whereas payroll professionals in the city of Sheboygan play a key role in maintaining the economic health of the city, carrying out such diverse tasks as paying into the unemployment insurance uh, system, providing information for child support enforcement, and carrying out tax withholding reporting and depositing. And whereas payroll departments collectively spend more than $2.4 trillion annually complying with a Madrid of federal and state wage laws and tax laws, and whereas payroll professionals play an increasingly important role in ensuring the economic security of American families by helping to identify non-custodial parents and making sure that they comply with their child support mandates. And whereas payroll professionals have become increasingly proactive in educating both business and community about and the public at large and state officials to discuss both improving compliance with government procedures and how compliance can be achieved at less cost to both government and businesses. I now therefore, Mike Manderstein, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim the week in which Labor Day falls is National Payroll Week, and I hereby recognize the efforts of the Sheboygan residents who work in the payroll profession and the employees that manage the payroll system for the city of Sheboygan. I'm proud to present these to these two girls this evening. Thank you very much for coming and all the great work you do. And next, I'd like to call up Deidre Martinez, the Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. This proclamation, whereas there are more than 265 local chambers of commerce serving villages, towns, and cities throughout Wisconsin, and whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce provides a wide variety of services to their members, including advocacy and economic development, and whereas the Chamber also promotes tourism and other community events, and whereas the Chamber also works to solve critical economic challenges, including the labor shortage, to and also to encourage entrepreneurship. And whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce is a critical community partner and a problem solver with the unique ability to work with stakeholders from both private and public sectors. 
And whereas the Chamber does not always receive the recognition and credit they deserve for making Sheboygan and Wisconsin a better place to live, work, and play, and whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce was created more than 100 years ago and currently has 823 members, and whereas the Sheboygan County Chamber partnered with the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation to develop the Someplace Better Workforce Attraction Campaign, now therefore I, Mike Vanderstein, by virtue of the authority vested me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan to hereby proclaim September of 2018 as Chamber of Commerce Month in the city of Sheboygan, and I commend this observance to all of our citizens. Deidre? Next, uh, we have an announcement about the Board of Water Commissioners. There will be an election held on September 17th. That will be at our council meeting in two weeks. If anyone is interested in this position, they can submit a, a letter of interest to our city clerk and uh, then be a candidate for that election coming up. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which will include items 2.2 through 2.18. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. The um, items on the consent agenda are before us then. Alderperson Phillips. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to request that item 2.10 be pulled from the agenda and voted on separately. Um, the reason for this is that I would like to abstain from voting on this particular topic. Um, and just to give a brief um, explanation, um, it's because of my position as Executive Director with Glacial Lakes Conservancy, which is serving as the purchaser for um, in this agreement. Um, negotiations between parties began long before my time with either Glacial Lakes Conservancy or the city. Um, in my year of employment with Glacial Lakes, I've come to know this property pretty well, and I think that it has a lot to offer the community. It's currently, um, as it stands, undevelopable and virtually unfarmable due to the fact that the majority of the land is wetland habitat. Um, but upon acquisition of the land, GLC would be working with the DNR to open up the land to the public so that they can enjoy it for scenic beauty and education and passive recreation. Um, so I would appreciate the support from the council on this topic. Thank you very much, Alderperson Phillips. Then we'll uh, vote on uh, item 2.10 first. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll on 2.10. Seven eyes, one abstain. Motion passes. Then the other items on the uh, uh, consent agenda are before us. Is there any discussion on any of the other items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for the remaining items on the consent agenda? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.5 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 87 of 1819 by Alderpersons Wolf and Donahue, authorizing the purchase of 908 Michigan Avenue by the City of Sheboygan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend. Uh, suspension has been requested. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I was if uh, uh, Chad Pelichek could uh, tell us what uh, the city intends to do with this property at 908 Michigan. 
Chad, could you please uh, give us a brief explanation? Uh, this property is what we know as the Club Michigan property, and the uh, attorney representing that has uh, been working with the city to transfer the property to the city. I think the the benefit from the city standpoint is um, should this property be um, in the city's hands for some time, there's the opportunity to relinquish some grandfathered zoning requirements that allowed it to be um, behaviors that I don't necessarily want to state here, but that people know what goes on at Club Michigan. Um, by us taking this property over, those uh, grandfather clauses will be um, removed and the city would plan to look at either one using some black grant dollars to renovate the front of it, the facade, and selling it as a uh, op occupiable business or just putting it back on the market. But actual plans haven't been determined at this stage, but our whole goal is to remove those grandfathered zoning requirements. Thank you. Are there any, is there any other discussion? <coughs> See none. Will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Item four point two will lay over. Items 4.3 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. 4.8. Uh, 4.8 uh, is resolution number 94 of 1819. Uh, this is uh, our, our 2019 budget. And I'd like to call forward um, Administrator Hufflin to give us uh, explanation and background on the budget that he's presenting. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, be able to present tonight uh, some additional details associated with the 2019 uh, Executive Program Budget. Uh, you all should have uh, had on your desk tonight uh, a three-ring binder, a uh, copy of the proposed budget. Uh, again, if you have any questions along the way, please, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'll stop and uh, respond to them. Uh, a link to the budget is available uh, on the city's website. Uh, in the next uh, day or so, a budget and brief will be available uh, for the public uh, who don't have an interest in going through uh, 462 pages. It's uh, probably 20 pages total. Um, let me start out by saying that uh, uh, with this 2019 proposed budget, uh, it was developed in accordance with the city's mission statement, as well as the city's vision statement. The vision, both of these statements uh, are part of the city's uh, strategic plan, uh, which was approved by the Common Council in January of 2017. Some things uh, that are external to the city were uh, significant drivers in the development of the 2019 budget. Uh, some of those uh, External factors are not new to the city, so many of you who have been alders, uh, who have reviewed and ultimately approved budgets in the past are familiar with these. First is the state's uh, tax levy limit, also the city's goal to maintain eligibility for the expenditure restraint program. Uh, a, uh, a policy statement that you as a common council have approved in the past is uh, to have equalized tax rate at consumer price index uh, or lower and consistent with the uh, fund balance policy to maintain a minimum of 25% in the general fund. Specifically on the tax levy limits, uh, the state lim limits the city of Sheboygan uh, for its percentage increase to be a combination of 60% uh, of new property tax base increase and potentially increases over and above based upon uh, any additional debt service cost. Uh, our calculations are that uh, the city is allowed to increase its tax levy by 1.91%. This past year, we had a $41 million net uh, construction increase. Um, however, most of that increase was located in TIF districts, and as a result, 
uh, a lot of that new tax revenue uh, is not available to use in our general fund wages, uh, health insurance costs, or, or other cost utilities, as an example. To give you a sense how that $41 million in net new construction compares to prior years, uh, last year was really sort of a, a banner year for the community. Uh, $94 million uh, was the net new construction. In 2015, construction year, $47 million. In the year prior, in 2014, $17 million. So uh, really 2016 construction year. So the 1-1 2017 value was high. The most significant project in our community during that construction year was acuity. Expenditure restraint program. Again, 60% of the city's net uh, property tax base increase plus uh, CPI uh, using the best information we have. Uh, we will not know what the official number is until probably the last week of October. Uh, 2.3 is what it's trending at. So for 2019, the city is estimating 3.24% uh, is an allowed increase in our expenditures. The, again, the 2.3 is a CPI. The 2019 executive budget recommends an equalized tax rate decrease of 4.32. So uh, again, uh, for the newer alders, uh, there are two uh, tax rates that uh, are often referred to. One is an equalized tax rate. That's when the market value for a, a property is used. Uh, equalized tax rate is the only way to compare one community to another. Um, and as a result, um, it's assuming that all property is valued at 100% or its market value. If an equalized tax rate is used, as this slide identifies, the tax rate uh, that I'm bringing forward actually drops by 4.32. Uh, uh, I think it's a little, little over 40 cents per thousand. However, if you consider the assessed tax rate, next slide, uh, the assessed tax rate is what the city assessor has as far as the value on our books. And when, when all property owners in the city write checks one year to another, this is probably the best way to gauge the increase in, in the taxes. So again, what you write a check out one year to another, uh, the recommendation is for a 19 cent per thousand increase. So if you have a $100,000 property, it's $19 increase. Uh, that uh, uh, 19 cent increase is a, a tad under 2%, it's 1.99%. Uh, this compares to a 19 cent increase last year, uh, or 1.97. The prior year's five cents, and the prior year it actually decreased by four cents. And again, these tax rates are to fund the next year's budget. So even though we have 2018, it's the tax rate approved in 2018 to fund 2019. Fund balance. Again, consistent with the city's goal of maintaining 25% uh, fund balance in the general fund. Uh, again, this is uh, critical for the city as we try and maintain our current uh, credit rating by Moody's Credit Service. Uh, the proposed 2019 executive budget uh, is recommended to be at 42 percent. Uh, approximately a year ago when we were looking at the 2018 budget, uh, the fund balance percent was 56 percent. But if you recall, 5.5 million was transferred out of the general fund to the capital projects fund uh, and that uh, was equivalent to a 14% of our fund balance percent. So we went from 56, subtracting 14, down to 42%. Next slide. This shows a little bit more graphically. Uh, the purple on the bottom uh, is uh, indicative of 25% of targeted fund balance. And then the um, light gray in the back uh, is where we were at. Again, you can see that significant change from 2018 uh, amended to, uh, it should be 2019. Um, so we are roughly between the 9.5 and the 16.1. Uh, 
uh, we have roughly 6.6 uh, million of additional funds uh, which make in essence up to the 42 percent next slide as you go through the document uh, you'll come across some pages that really uh, help summarize uh, what's what's transpiring for the 2019 budget uh, this is one of those pages that is I think a great summary of, of if, if you're financially uh, sort of focused or or have an orientation for numbers on page 53 of your budget book uh, this page is located um, on that page uh, the details of this page are located on that page a um, couple things I want to point out uh, overall general fund expense sort of the first line that goes across you'll see that the general fund budget overall increases by 1.27 percent or a little less than half a million dollars to fund the 2019 budget, the levy required is recommended to increase by $195,000 or only a 1.2% increase. Other changes as far as where the levy is going for 2019, you'll see some additional funding in the special revenue fund uh, accounts. Specifically, this is for the Mead Public Library. Uh, 225,000 of additional funds in the debt service uh, fund general obligation uh, debt fund uh, and a slight decrease in the capital projects fund uh, so down toward the bottom you'll see total tax levy uh, four hundred forty six thousand and ten dollars or a 1.9 percent increase uh, overall expenses second line from the bottom uh, going from one point I'm sorry 122 million approximately to 128 million approximately or a 4.9 percent increase approximately six million dollars uh, some of you are aware, are aware that uh, uh, in October and excuse me in November December we will be refinancing one of our short-term notes our, our uh, bond anticipated notes our notes anticipated notes uh, and as a result uh, we will uh, we will have a transaction uh, in no in December and then in January uh, that corresponds to that refinancing so we have uh, a payoff as far as money coming in from the investors but then of course we need to pay off the 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 short-term note anticipated notes in January so we have roughly 8.4 million dollars of really kind of a, a, a limited transactional uh, activity if we were to take out that 8.4 million comparing the 18 budget to the 19 budget we would actually have a $2.4 million decrease or a 2% overall decrease in, in expenditures. Next slide, please. Uh, property tax levy. This gives you a sense as far as where that, uh, mo that levy money, property tax levy money is going. Uh, the bottom chart, which I think is red, uh, shows that uh, it's fairly consistent. Uh, on, the, on 2015, it's roughly 16 million and in 2019 it's 16.4 million so not a lot of change in the general fund uh, as far as assignment or allocation for property taxes uh, toward the top again that purple um, is let me see my notes is debt uh, 2.9 is the two fifth year 2015 and it increases to 3.4 in 2019. So you're seeing roughly a half a million dollar increase over a five-year uh, five-year trend. Uh, this last year, again comparing 2018 to 2019, uh, as I mentioned earlier, roughly a half a million dollar increase or a 1.91 percent increase. No real changes in transit. Um, and no, no significant change in capital. Next slide, please. Again, shows that four hundred forty-six thousand uh, and ten dollars, and shows again uh, where the money is going to be uh, coming from and where specifically it's going to be spent. So, two hundred twenty-five thousand, or roughly half of the new funds uh, in the form of property taxes, will go to debt service. The rest will go. Uh, primarily for general fund operations last year at this time that that first line 
um, was 864,000, and the amount going to debt service was 310. So we overall had a one, almost a $1.2 million increase in the levy last year, again, primarily due to that significant increase in net new construction. Next slide, please. Personnel changes. A point four for an accounting assistant, point six for a human resource generalist, point two for assistant city attorney, uh, a full uh, FTE in the uh, IT uh, fund, uh, which would be, uh, uh, we hope to recruit and hire and have this person on board July 1st of 2019. Uh, we had one position that was actually transferred from the wastewater to utility fund to engineering, uh, so no net change, but uh, again, a transfer. And then we had uh, three positions that I'm recommending reductions. Uh, actually, the library already took action for a two and a half uh, FTE position reduction. Uh, a half a position uh, will be uh, subtracted out of the uh, clerk's office uh, that is linked to elections and then uh, a quarter FTE reduction from the cable TV fund uh, studio production technician. Uh, all, in, all in all, uh, 449 positions uh, in the city are being proposed for 2019. That compares to 449 for 2018, so no net change in personnel as far as numbers. Next slide, please. General fund revenues, which is one of our largest budgets, uh, this gives you a sense as far as the largest pieces of the pie. Property tax levy is on the sort of right side, and on the bottom left side is intergovernmental revenues. Uh, these are our number one and number two sources of revenue. Uh, between the two, uh, they represent 81% of our revenue in just these two sources. And that percent is this, exactly the same as 2018. Next slide, please. Uh, some of the this gives you a sense as far as the different categories of revenue. Uh, one thing to note is if you go all the way down to the bottom where it says interfund transfers and applied fund balance, these are really the only two categories where you're seeing a percent change as far as the makeup of the overall budget. Uh, the interfund transfers, there's actually a decrease of roughly half of a percent. And, uh, and in applied fund balance recommendation, to go up half a percent, and I'll get into the details in, in a few minutes. Next slide, please. General fund revenues, uh, again, property taxes increased 195,000 in the general fund. Transportation aids, again, this is a, a state program where the formula recognizes uh, local government expenditures, so the more we spend on streets, the more that they subsidize or, or provide the city with transportation aids. And in light of the significant changes that you as a council have made as far as funding street programs uh, in Sheboygan, uh, we expect to see an increase of 199,000 uh, for the 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. Applied fund balance, uh, I'm recommending that we increase the amount of fund balance used to balance this budget, uh, roughly 100, excuse me, $218,000. For interfund transfers, the municipal court uh, we'll send our way to the general fund from their fund 103,000 less. Uh, we did in 2018 uh, have 192,000 of money transferred out of TID 10. Um, there will be zero transferred uh, in 2019. And then the ambulance fund, based upon our, our estimates and projections, we think uh, it's, a, it's a safer number to reduce uh, that transfer by $110,000. Next slide. This is a pie chart for the 2019 proposed expenditure budget. Again, uh, in red, uh, a huge uh, piece of the pie. Uh, this is public safety. Uh, it includes uh, building inspection. It includes civil defense. It includes police and fire, 56%. Second is the green slice. This is public works. Uh, so between the two, it represents 81% uh, of the overall expenditures are in those two categories. Um, there's a, uh, an increase uh, roughly of 3% over last year 
respectively it was 55 percent and 23 percent the reason for the uh, relative increase uh, in costs associated with those two categories uh, of services are really due to health insurance increases as well as wage increases uh, non-personnel capital outlay really no significance so it's all about uh, the settled contracts or the anticipation of uh, contracts being settled next expenditures again these are the major categories uh, the changes as I mentioned public safety public works 1.9 percent increase in the share of the pie going to public safety and roughly eight tenths of a percent for public works between uh, 2018 and 19 a 1.2 percent overall increase that compares to a 3 percent increase going from 17 to 18. Uh, significant general fund expenditure changes uh, elections going from uh, four this year down to two uh, is uh, Meredith's best estimate a $51,000 savings adding that human resource generalist uh, $47,000 $47,000 yes uh, assistant city attorney uh, level two uh, uh, overall this is a four tenths uh, but a two tenths of a FTE increase over what was identified in the uh, the official approved 2018 budget uh, at a cost of 34,000 uh, $40,000 estimate cost to purchase land adjacent to an alley uh, additional sand salt cost for snow and ice control additional 40,000 and again if you recall last year when we had no contract settled we put all the anticipated costs for those wage increases in a wage adjustment reserve account on the contingency contingency page with the expectation that all our contracts will be signed prior to the start of the new year we placed uh, those increases in the individual budgets so no longer do we have it in one pot sort of at the tail end of the budget all the wage increases are in the appropriate locations throughout throughout the budget document so there's a decrease of roughly 1.2 million dollars in that wage adjustment reserve account some of the uh, specialty type funds uh, park forestry and open space uh, this is a special revenue fund uh, projects uh, are JC Park swimming area thirty thousand dollars evergreen park area two ten thousand and uh, resurfacing Volrep park tennis courts uh, seventy thousand Block grant, uh, some projects are urban forestry, uh, MLS Bohr uh, dealing with that issue, public service contributions, 155,000, and uh, North 10th Street is an eligible street uh, for block grant funds. Park impact fee is the next uh, fund. Uh, additional walkways, again, these are in many cases uh, to conform with ADA, Optimus Park, Ballrath Park, and Kiwanis Park. For a total cost of 40,000 related to this effort me public library again the public uh, the me public library board uh, has approved the 2019 budget the city's contribution I'm recommending to increase by sixty three thousand four hundred ninety two dollars roughly a two percent increase over their 2018 uh, contribution uh, of tax dollars in 2017 to 2018 that change was a little over 30,000 or a 1.25 percent increase for the five prior years there was zero percent change in property tax levy allocation uh, from the from the city overall so they've um, sort of right-sized their budget and uh, may do with at least limited changes or no changes from property tax levy to fund their operations ambulance fund uh, based upon uh, estimates uh, for 2018 and trying to project them for 2019 um, the recommendation is to increase the charge uh, line item by 150,000 again this is over the 2018 adopted budget uh, and then the transfer of the general fund um, an increase of 110,000 correspondingly an increase in the general fund transfer of 110,000 Harbor Center Marina Fund uh, many of you are aware that um, the fund balance for this fund is, is a negative fund balance and we've carried that negative fund balance for 
for probably a decade or more. Uh, starting last year, uh, in 2017, the city started to transfer funds out of our convention center fund, uh, which has a healthy fund balance. Um, so 2017, 746,000 was transferred. This year, I'm recommending in 18, uh, 225,000 be transferred. And then for 19, I'm recommending an additional 225,000 uh, be transferred. Uh, one of the questions that came up during the last two years of our Moody Credit Service rating call was what's the city doing with this negative fund balance in the Harbor Center Marina Fund? So I think as we attempt to reduce that negative fund balance, um, we're showing that we're make, you know, uh, making healthy transfers uh, as far as funding from our other accounts to this fund. In 2016, uh, for comparison purposes, we were negative 3.3 million. Uh, at the end of 2019, uh, we should be close to 2.4. So again, we're moving in the right direction, trying to reduce that negative fund balance. Next is debt service fund. Oftentimes I get a question of how much effort, how much property tax levy money is going to uh, pay our debt, our general fund, our general obligation uh, debt uh, service fund. And I think the easiest way to sort of communicate is how much of our tax rate is going for this purpose. Uh, I'm recommending, again, that 225000 that equates to a one cent on the equalized tax rate. And you can see uh, the 2018 rate, 17 and 16, they're all relatively similar. Uh, for 2019, the planned general obligation debt issue is roughly $11 million. And we'll get into a few minutes uh, what makes up that $11 million to planned uh, debt issuance. Next is where are we at? Uh, at the end of each of these years, 2016 through 2019, our net debt outstanding and our ratio. Uh, for the in, uh, going down to 2018, at the end of 2018, we expect to be at roughly 35 million for net debt outstanding or roughly 25%. Um, for those of you keeping track, our, our debt policy has a, a stated uh, maximum uh, that is 60%. So we are significantly, significantly lower than, than 60% being at 25.2. With that additional 10 million and change of new issuance, plus the payment of principal in 2019, um, it will grow from 35 million to 41 and a half million net out, debt outstanding, or just a uh, tad under 30%. Next slide. Major activities in the capital projects fund. are the recognition that we're going to receive significant federal grants in 2019. One of the significant projects is two lines down the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, 3.8 million. 80% of that project will be paid with federal funds. Another major uh, purchase will be the fixed route revenue buses, 1.3 million, 80% federal funds. Other activity is uh, again finishing up on the city hall roughly three million again at this point most of that those funds are being paid with uh, fund balance transferred from the general fund superior avenue 1.1 million from north 29th to taylor and then boots and sports complex the 590 um, the funding source for that came out of a tourism fund uh, a couple years ago for Capital Improvement Fund, uh, North Avenue is our largest project from Calumet to North 21st Street. Fire completion of Fire Station Number 1 renovations, uh, a bus wash, Indiana Avenue Trail right-of-way purchase, uh, and the miscellaneous streets. Uh, those include Geely, uh, Georgia, and North 10th Street. Just to mention that Indiana Avenue Trail, our net cost is expected to be $1 million so one and a half will uh, come from uh, other sources. Other capital funds uh, located mostly in our TIF districts, uh, South Point landscaping and signage, we, don't we do not anticipate completion of that this construction season, so 
uh, these two sort of aspects of the project will occur in 2019. Uh, this is where some of the accounting goes for that Indiana, tra Indiana, Indiana Trail, uh, 1.5 million. Uh, infrastructure in TID 17, 2.5. This is associated with the streets surrounding Badger State Lofts, the, the former tannery or Coakley storage. Uh, half a million dollars to begin the process of designing a new parking structure as a companion um, facility or amenity for the Fresh Tech, the Innovation District. And then last is TID 16, the Halperin Fountain uh, Plaza Improvements, uh, which we expect to bid out uh, January 1st, uh, 2019. Estimated cost is $400,000. In ser internal service funds, uh, no change, significant change expected for workers' compensation fund, liability insurance fund. Uh, for health insurance, uh, this will be on the finance and uh, personnel committee uh, when they meet next week. Uh, recommendation is a 10% increase in overall premium cost. So the employer portion goes up 10%, the employee portion goes up 10%. Uh, this will ultimately total roughly $600,000. Rec a significant recommendation on the benefit side is a reduction in the HSA contributions to individual employees, uh, 158,000 and change uh, reduction from 2018 level. Again, the goal for this fund is to maintain what is a policy statement by the Common Council to have no less than $3 million fund balance at any point in time. Wastewater Utility Fund uh, recommendation is to increase rates uh, effective January 1st uh, by 7%, uh, which will bring in an additional half a million dollars. Other significant projects uh, that are proposed is the Lakeshore Interceptor uh, pipe is to inspect it, clean it at a cost of 300,000. Uh, and you'll see the digestion cover, uh, aeration blower replacement, and sewer line reconstruction uh, relining uh, program for roughly a million. Again, with the city's aggressive street reconstruction projects or programs, uh, there is a corresponding need for us to check out the sanitary sewer and either replace or reline. Parking and transit, real, no material change in services for these two funds. The boat facility fund, no material change in that's operations. And again, a copy of the budget, as I mentioned, is available on the city's website. Hard copies. So a three-ring binder similar to what you received will be available at City Hall, Mead Public Library, and as I mentioned, the next couple of days, a budget brief will be available for, for our residents who are looking for a more summary version of the budget. Again, appreciate your, your time this evening and look forward to attending the meetings with uh, the management team as they make presentations in the next couple of weeks to your committee, commissions, and boards. Thank you again. Administrator Hufflin, thank you very much for the budget presentation report. And I'd also like to commend the finance department led by Nancy Buss and, and our uh, new finance director, Martin Halverson, for all the work that they put in to assist you. And then we also have to commend all of the department heads and our, our budget analyst, Kerry, uh, for all the work that's been done uh, to bring this budget together for us to consider. So the uh, budget documents then will be referred to the standing committees. Uh, this is going to be your opportunity to uh, ask questions and pick them apart. And, uh, and then you can make your referrals to the Common Council. And we're anticipating that uh, the budget will come up for approval at our first meeting in November. Uh, next, we'll go on to reports of committees. Um, Item 5.1 is RC number 126 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred by direct referral resolution number 80 <coughs> of 1819 by Alderpersons Rindfleisch and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a vacant land uh, to uh, purchase with Racetrack Road LLC and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Rindfleisch. I move to be accepted. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder person, uh, Rindfleisch? Might we have Chad say a few words about this? Chad, can you add on to this? So Racetrack Road LLC is the uh, Van Horn property. There was discussion, I think, in the previous council 
session maybe about selling this uh, 2.79 acre parcel um, in the business park this would be the piece of land between the parcel of land that Van Horn bought south of Russ Darrell on Racetrack Road uh, and then basically between their parcel and the new South Taylor Drive that's being extended through there it's a remnant piece of property under the agreement we'll be selling the property for uh, one dollar uh, primarily to provide them stormwater uh, facility improvements and access to the new Taylor Drive uh, with the assumption that they'll move forward and develop about six million dollars as a new car dealership any other questions or discussion? See none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 127 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred direct referral resolution number 82 of 1819 by Alder Persons for Inflation Born authorizing a transfer of the appropriations in the 2018 budget for TID 19 and City Hall renovations and recommends approving the resolution. Alder Person Renflesh. Often pass the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Elder person born. Motion passes. Oh, Item 5.3 is RC number 128. Uh, one second. One second. That's okay. Okay. Eight eyes. Thank you. Item uh, 5.3 is RC number 128 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred direct referral resolution number 83 of 1819 by Alder Persons Rinfleisch. Born authorizing entering into a development agreement with Waters Edge Development of Sheboygan LLC and recommends approving their resolution. Alderperson Rinfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. It's up for discussion. Alderperson Rinfleisch. This is the uh, condo development on North 15th Street, west of Glass. A coffee house area. We're anxious and excited to see something starting. Okay, uh, Chad, would you like to add something to that? Yes. Yeah, so this, as following up to Alderman Reinflesch's comments, this is a 32 con 32 unit condo development that'll be one and two bedroom units with one and two car garages. Um, I believe there's six buildings proposed to be constructed as part of it. It's a total project of about seven million. It'll be completed in two phases over the next two years, and the city is giving about a 10% development incentive, 350,000 for phase one, and 350,000 as a tax uh, rebate through the TIF district as phase two progresses. So the plan is to have the entire uh, 32 units completed by 2020. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Alderperson Born. What Alderman Rinfleisch and Chad said is that I believe the anticipated price point for these condos is going to be between 200 and 250 thousand dollars. Thank you. Alderperson Phillips. Chad? It's on a vacant parcel of land along the Sheboygan River, basically west of the uh, Richardson Clearance Center. So the old Richardson Clearance Center, um, just west of there, uh, west of North 15th Street, their street right away. And then it's a, about a two and a half acre parcel right along the river that's undeveloped. Anyone else? 
seeing no more lights, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Seven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Um, under general ordinances, items 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under other matters received after the agenda was published, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. 7.1 <coughs> is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various <coughs> license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, June 30, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase and installation of new baseball park lighting for the Wildwood Sheboygan A's Mary Tessweed Knauf Baseball Park Complex on a cost share basis with the Sheboygan A's Baseball Organization. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Uh, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for your time tonight.